Hi, recently I've done a few videos on 22 long rifle hollow point expansion and effectiveness when fired from a handgun. Well, that of course brought up the question of 22 long rifle hollow point expansion and effectiveness when fired from a rifle, which brought up the debate over the viability of a 22 rifle as a home defense gun. Well, let's shoot some 22 rifles and see if we can shed any light on that subject. Now before we go any farther, I've got to address the topic of all the things people say about 22s. I have heard so many people say so many cockamamie things about 22s over the years, I can't even begin to address it. But there's two things I've heard people say that I really want to address. One is the saying that a 22 isn't much, but it sure beats nothing. That might seem axiomatic, but I'm going to put it to the test. So what I've got is the two soda jugs on your right, I'm going to engage those with nothing. And then I'll engage the two soda jugs on your left with a 22 rifle, and we'll see which is more effective. So first, the jugs on the right with nothing. Okay, marginally effective. Now let's engage the jugs on the left with a 22. You be the judge, but I'm going to say the 22 is more effective. Now there's one other adage I want to address about 22s. A long time ago, someone asked an expert about the viability of his 22 long rifle caliber handgun as a self-defense gun. And the expert at that time told him that a 22 is isn't much, but certainly a solid hit from a 22 is a lot more effective than a loud miss from a 44 Magnum. Well, let's put that to the test. Now we're talking about rifles, so I've got my 44 Magnum rifle and I'll engage the two soda jugs on the right with the 44 Magnum, but I'll miss. And then I'll engage the two soda jugs on the left with the 22 rifle, but I'll hit them. And let's see which one is more effective. Okay. Again, I'm gonna have to go with the 22 wins. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get serious. We're talking about 22 rifles and we're also talking about 22 hollow point ammunition. Now we've already demonstrated with a handgun that as long as you have good quality ammunition and a handgun with a reasonable barrel length, such as 4 inches or greater, you're going to get sufficient expansion at a distance of 20 yards. But with a rifle used in the venue that a 22 rifle is really made to be used for, something like rabbit hunting, you may very well be called upon to shoot farther distances than that, 50, 75, maybe even 100 yards. And we know that hollow point bullets are velocity based. I've said this before. The faster you propel them, the more expansion you'll get up to a point. If you propel them too slowly, they'll drop below expansion threshold and you'll get minimal to no expansion. We also know that as bullets go down range, they lose velocity. So at what range will bullets fired from this rifle drop below expansion threshold. And then there's the matter of accuracy. Given the nature of 22 rifles and 22 ammunition, there's a lot of people of the opinion they can't really be fired accurately at any great distance. Well, when I was in Marine Corps basic training, I was taught that maximum effective range is the greatest range at which the average Marine can consistently hit a target. That's not how far the rifle will shoot. That's the greatest range at which the average Marine can consistently hit a target. Now in that case, it was shooting from the prone at a man-sized silhouette. But I've found that when I'm rabbit hunting, virtually all of the shots I take are offhand. So for today, I'm going to define maximum effective range with a 22 rifle as being the greatest distance at which the average rabbit hunter shooting offhand can consistently hit a rabbit-sized target and retain sufficient hollow point expansion. Now let's see if we can determine what that is. I've got a target down here at 100 yards, so let me shoot a few shots and we'll see what kind of group I can hold. And yes, I wear earplugs on every shot I take.
And there you have it. I think we can say that you can consistently hit a rabbit sized target at that distance. Now you notice I had one hit clear down here. I don't know if you could hear that on the audio, but I could feel it when it went off. That was an underpowered round, such as the nature of 22 ammunition. But the question is, by the time that bullet has traveled 100 yards, does it still have velocity sufficient for hollow point expansion? Let's put that to the test. The ammunition I was using was CCI Mini Mag 36 grain hollow points, and we recovered three of the bullets, and you can see that they're mushroomed out very well. So, maximum effective range of a 22 rifle? Well, for me, with my 1022 and an aftermarket peep sight, at least 100 yards, maybe as far as 125. And if you use a different type of rifle, maybe you put a scope on it, or you're a better shot than I am, or you use a different type of 22 ammo, you might have a maximum effective range even farther than that. But a lot of people are concerned with the role of a 22 rifle as a home defense gun. Well, your range is most likely going to be a lot less than 100 yards. Now, previously we've done a demonstration of 22 hollow point effectiveness out of a handgun at close range. Let's see how effective hollow points can be out of a rifle at really close range. And now, without any further ado, it's time for the meat target. For those of you who haven't seen this, what it is is a pork chop to simulate a pectoral muscle and then pork ribs, then a watermelon to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, and then behind it, as always, the high-tech fleece bullet stuff. Now we'll cover it with four layers of t-shirt, shoot it with our 22 rifle from seven yards, and then we'll recover the bullets, we'll examine bullet expansion, we'll look at the penetration and how much damage it does, and see then if we can infer how effective that would be. And we'll start with our CCI Mini Mag 36 grain hollow points. Well, I've got our meat target torn up. Let's see how we did. Bullets all went through the ribs on the front, hit the ribs in a couple of places and just shattered them, penetrated all the way through the watermelon, and all three bullets were stopped by the ribs on the back, which is the exact same amount of penetration we got out of this ammunition with the handgun. However, the difference is, it looks like it did a little more damage to the watermelon, and our bullets are expanded quite a bit more. Now, let me show you a close-up of those Mini Mag bullets. And there you can see our three 36 grain Mini Mag bullets, and they're all expanded very well. Okay, now we have a new meat target set up, so we'll repeat that from seven yards, but this time we'll use the CCI Stingers. These are a 32 grain hollow point, so let's see if that lighter bullet turns into less penetration. So how'd we do with our stingers? Well, really mixed results. Now, going through our pork chop pectoral muscle, just chewed it up. Going through our ribs, hit a couple of them, broke them, really made some big holes in there. Going into our watermelon, chewed it up really well. But only one bullet actually made it far enough to be stopped by the ribs on the back side, and that was the only bullet that was whole. The other bullets fragmented, and there were little pieces everywhere. Some of those pieces stuck in the ribs. So although you got a lot of damage, you didn't get as much penetration. And which one of those is better? And is the stinger sufficient? You be the judge. There's one more thing I want to cover about a 22 rifle as a home defense gun. There's lots of good lever action and pump action rifles out there, but auto loaders are really more popular. And lots of auto loaders have a tube magazine that'll hold 14 or 15 or more. Guns like this 1022 can have detachable box magazines that'll hold 25 or more. And that allows you to put a lot of rounds down there. Not bad at all. The thing is though, with guns like this, there's a tendency that some people have to think that they can be fired from the hip or some kind of assault position and that that will be really effective. Well, let's give that a try. Okay, missed a couple, but overall not too bad. The thing is though, I've practiced that for years, and you can see that it still wasn't really any faster and certainly not any more accurate than just aiming. Keep that in mind. So what, if anything, did we learn about 22 rifles? Well, their accuracy, their power, and their range is more than a lot of people give them credit for. But as a home defense gun, 
they wouldn't be the first recommendation that I would make for most people. But there are some reasons you may select a 22 rifle for home defense. Things like you're not 21 yet and you can't buy a handgun. Reasons of economics, things like that. Probably the two biggest reasons you'd select a 22 rifle for home defense would be because you're one of those people that can shoot a 22 really well, but you get rattled by loud noise and recoil, so you don't do as well with the bigger calibers. And the main reason you'd select a 22 rifle is because it might be the only gun you have. And if that's the case, it's probably going to be plenty in a home defense situation. But the real bottom line about 22 rifles is they are not to be underestimated. So, as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the 22 rifle video.